Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Hyperconscious Podcast. Alan, what is hyperconscious? Once you understand why something is the way that it is, now you have the power to change it. Great conversations with great people and great questions are the keys to the kingdom of unlocking your consciousness. Every single action that you do starts as a thought. When you control the way you think, you will control the way you act, and you will control the way you live. That is hyperconscious. Geographically. Geographically. This is cool. So I would say make sure that pretty face is shown. Yes. True. They're going to want to see that <laughs> thing. They're going to want to see that <laughs> thing, Alan. It's that true. face. You good? Ready? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another very special, as always, episode of the Hyperconscious Podcast. We are going to do another 20-minute scratching the surface episode. This is episode number 89. We are hammering our way towards 100 and uh, can't wait till we get there. Yeah, we're on our way to 100. And today, Kevin decided that we should do an episode on... I'll let him explain it. That is a powerful statement. I decided... That is a very powerful statement. I you, wanna... you decided. No, no, no. Just like in general. When somebody says, I decided, that's like, yeah. you just changed your life. I'm all like fired that. up now. Yeah, it's just a powerful statement. So I was on a call with one of my clients Friday night. And as we were getting ready to get off the call, I asked a question about her relationship. Mm. And it blew her mind because she hasn't questioned it. Right, it kind of the things that we do daily, the relationships we're in, the jobs we're in, our activities, our habits. When we do them for long enough, it just kind of like locks in as normal, and then we don't ask ourselves, "Why am I in this relationship still?" If all of these things have changed, if the circumstances are what brought us together in the first place, and those circumstances aren't there anymore, am I still being served here? Am I still happy here? Am I still respected here? Am I still appreciated? All that happy jazz. So, basically, the outline of this episode is going to be. The questions that we ask ourselves are super important, but the answers that we answer are more important. They're just as important. Sort of like self-check-ins. Yeah. You can ask yourself questions all day, but if you don't sit down and go hyper-conscious and think like, what am I actually getting out of this relationship? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, okay, it's better than being single, right? It's probably better than being single, but am I happy? Am I fulfilled? Is this sustainable? Am I going to look back in a year and say, oh, I should have got out of that way earlier? That's a great question right there, for sure. Another thing to think about, too, is, is like he said, the law of familiarity creeps in. We do things, and it becomes normal. We always talk about making this normal, but then stirring the pot. So I always use the analogy of the snow globe. Mm -hmm. Um, Something either happens to us, or we mastermind with someone that gets us to question ourselves. But what what if we're going along... And here's the thing, human beings, and I have an excerpt later to read about this, have a certainty bias, which basically means in order for human beings to take consistent action in a given direction, we have to have a strong level of certainty behind basically a knowing of what we're doing is right for us. So we have this kind of cognitive bias in our brain that that locks us in on the things we're doing. But if you think about growth, right, and that's what this podcast is about, growth requires change. And the only way to change is to question what you're currently doing. And so that's what this episode is about, is shaking up your own snow globe if life isn't doing it for you um, <clears throat> and with the right questions. So we each wrote down five different questions off the top of our heads that you can use. But basically, that's kind of what this podcast also is. Every episode, you're going to start, we're, we're basically stirring the pot. And then the snow globe gets shaken up, and then you figure out what lands. And each time the snow globe settles, you have a new course of action that's more optimum for who you are today and who you want to be. It's funny that... So we, you and I were talking about my past relationships the other day. Mm. And it's like, I look back on them, and I'm thinking to myself, I wasn't in the relationships for the right reason at all. And I know that now. I didn't at the time. 
But I also didn't care at the time. I also didn't run self checks. I also didn't go what? hyperconscious. I was just happy that I was number one, not single. Yeah. Number two, somebody cared about me. Like, mm. I think that's where a lot of people are. If you're there, so this is something I came up with recently, and me and Matt were talking about this, and it's like, I don't really care if we were friends in high school. I base my friendship with you how you treat me now. Mm. So if you came into my life right now and acted the way you're acting right now, I don't really care about the history we have. Interesting. Yeah, because those are circumstances. Yeah. Maybe you were a different person then. Maybe things were easier for you. Maybe maybe you didn't have the things happen to you that you have, but it's like, I need you to treat me the way that you're going to treat me now. Yeah. I can't, I can't look back and say, oh, you were so good to me then. Okay, I'll give you a chance, right? You get a longer net. Yeah. Or a longer rope, right? Ah, exactly. You I like a, that. You get a I longer like rope. It's yep. not like I'm just going to cut you out of my life. Yeah, it's more of I like can't, a... I cannot base our current relationship off our past relationship. Totally. It's a dangerous game to play. Can we go deeper on... You said that you were in relationships for what you consider the wrong reasons. Um, what were those reasons? <laughs> Digging deep. <laughs> Digging deep. Uh, so I told you for one of my relationships, I just thought this girl was the most beautiful thing ever. Mm. Like the, from the first time I saw her picture, I was like, "This is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my entire life." And that's one good reason, but it's, it's not a great enough, reason, it's, right? It's, but it's not a good it's... enough reason to put everything else like on the back burner. And exactly. again, she was very good to me. She didn't treat me badly, but I treated myself badly in that relationship. Mm. I didn't, I didn't try to get better. I was super depressed. Like it was almost like that was enough for me. Mm. And the rest of my life didn't matter. I didn't really care. Like I was unhappy at work, but it didn't matter. Back then, you said you weren't hyperconscious. I think this is kind of cool because being hyperconscious is questioning things. Yeah, all the time. All the time. All the yeah, time. It's, it's definitely it's, the harder road, but yeah. it will pay off long term. <clears throat> long term, it'll pay yeah. off big time because yeah. you're constantly checking. Again, the analogy we always use, right? If you're going flying from Boston to Los Angeles, the plane is literally off course 99.9% .9 of the time, but they have this machine. Um, a barometer that constantly like readjusts the um, plane's trajectory. And it's like, that's kind of what this is. It's constantly checking in with yourself. So I'm not saying not to have any certainty. Like you want to have a strong level of certainty that where you're headed is a good thing, but you also have to question yourself along the way and mix, mix up your philosophy. Uh, Jim Rohn quote, he says, it's not the set, it's not the uh, wind, the wind blows on us all, it's the set of the sail. Mm. So the set of the sail is going to determine your direction and therefore your destination. And so if you choose a destination in advance, you have to make sure that you're setting your sail, your philosophy, correctly to make sure you're getting there. And I think the only way to do that is to consistently get in rooms with people who question why you do what you do and why they do what they do. And if that's not happening consistency, consistently, you can do it yourself. It is. That's the thing, though. So you kind of got to get that muscle working, like that questioning and answering yourself muscle working. Alan and I, that's the relationship thing came because we were hanging out in Alan's room. Mm -hmm. We were talking about stuff that's going on in both of our lives. And then it just came up of like, I think I kind of have done relationships wrong. Yeah. I think most of my relationships just haven't been good. They haven't been healthy. They haven't been directed the right way. They haven't been sustainable. They haven't been a lot of things. So if you could whisper in, in the old Kevin's ear, who wasn't hyperconscious. I would scream what, in his ear. What would you say? You're fucking up. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I would ask, why are you here? Mm. Why are you here? And I like the, um, who was, who said, what can I give here? I think it was Jarek. Derek yeah. Robbins said, like, when you're, when you're in a relationship, you should think just as much about what can I give to this person 100%. as compared to what am I getting from Absolutely. This. And I think that I always try to be super giving. Yeah. Right? I, I feel like I'm a giving person. You definitely are. But I didn't necessarily have expectations of what I ex like needed to receive. Like, I didn't really have requirements. I just was, if you loved me... I, that was kind of enough. Like, I was just happy with that. Yeah. And I would literally, like, I would just do anything. I would pay for stuff. I don't care. Like, when it comes to that, I don't care about that. I like paying for people. I like making people feel safe. I like making people's problems go away. Like, that's one of the reasons I'm sure I was directed towards this this style of podcasting. I like to help people. Absolutely. I want to make people feel safe. I want to make them feel like they're not alone. So, I just think a lot of my relationships were based on my limited, stuck mindset. My self-consciousness, my lack of confidence, a lot of things. A lot L of things. Let me ask you this. Did you have a strong vision for the future? Oh, I didn't have any. No. Even with your relationship? 
No. So I never felt in control of my relationships. I felt like I, we always talk about living uh, on purpose versus living by accident. I mm. lived by accident throughout my entire relationships, basically. My goodness, man. Yeah, man. Wow. And this is all like coming to me right now. This is, and guys, this is the power of questions. Like Alan is digging. He's digging. Can I ask you another question? Can I ask you another question? Hang out in the discomfort a little bit. I yeah. don't expect you to do it on the air. Like we do. <laughs> yeah. That's fine if you don't want to do that. But I'm having breakthroughs as we sit here of like, interesting like did i did i screw that up like did, oh when i look back it's like is everything the way i actually pictured it or was my frame of mind so far to the other side that like i don't know it's interesting so with leah yep did you picture a vision of the future with her if i did it was only because of it's hard did man, you picture it's like, ever marrying her or ever like 10 years down the road or any of that i don't know it's hard That's because probably it's enough. like in in the moment when you're with somebody and that's almost like what I needed. I felt like I needed to be in a relationship. Mm-hmm. It was like she was the air that I needed. Mm. So I would have just kept breathing it for as long as it was around. So one thing I want to bring to the listeners and again, right now. I don't, Leah was not bad to me. I don't want anybody yeah, to no, think that. Yeah, no, no, Leah, that, that, you make that clear. I just want to make that clear. No, you yeah, totally. Yeah, it's you, very important I make that clear. Absolutely. Um, for the listeners, first of all, Kevin is... These questions are hard, man. Mm-hmm. Like, that's what we're talking about. These questions are hard because it's like, oh, shit, man. Like, interesting. Yeah. And then you dig and it's like, you, you have to realize. I was on a podcast recently. It's called the Hero Mom Podcast. And they ask questions, right? And you learn so much about yourself because you're digging to answer these questions authentically and vul- being vulnerable. And it's fascinating how much you can learn about yourself when someone asks you questions and you try to dig to yeah. answer them. Here's the thing you end up realizing that you've made a lot of mistakes. Now, that doesn't mean you were a bad person. That doesn't mean you didn't have a big heart. That doesn't mean that you're horrible or anything like that. It just means that, and I said this on the Hero Mom podcast, I said, I think that one of the myths of our current culture is like this whole wishing all of our mistakes away. Like, oh, that was meant to happen. Oh, that was meant to happen. That was meant to happen. I think that that is a dangerous game because if you don't own the fact that you screwed up in the past. And I shouldn't say screwed up, but like that you could have done it better, then how are you supposed to make a change? Mm. Human beings change when they're in pain and they're in discomfort. So, for example, if Kevin is digging deep about his past relationships right now, which he is, and that's making him uncomfortable to think about all of the time that he you know, didn't use ideally, I won't say wasted, but didn't use ideally, guess what? That pain associated with that is what is going to get him to make sure his next relationship isn't that way. So that's so huge. Stop wishing away pain because human beings only change evolutionarily, if that's a word, from pain. It is now. From pain. You're going to change when you're in pain. So you have to kind of have the uncomfortable conversation either with yourself or with other people and really dig deep. <clears throat> One of the things that I wanted to ask you too is for your next relationship, and here's where the benefits come in right, of, of right. the pain, <clears throat> what are the good reasons you're going to make sure are there as a foundation to at least start off on. So I'm at the point now where I'm very confident in what I bring to the table. I think I'm a very good person. I think I'm well-rounded. I think I'm caring. I'm a far better communicator than I have ever been. And I'm far more willing to talk about the things that aren't necessarily comfortable, Mm -hmm. right? Like that's, if you can talk about the stuff that makes you uncomfortable, that's when you have breakthroughs. Oh yeah. And you got to do it in a, in a calm manner, not yelling, Right. Not screaming. Like just, <laughs> this is the way you make me feel when you do this. How do I make you feel when I do this? Is there anything that we should talk about that's bothering you? Like, it's a fine line. And obviously it's easy for me to say that now because I don't have somebody I'm doing that with. Yeah. But I think that knowing your value and knowing that we always, I always love going back to the foundation analogy. You cannot build a strong house on top of a weak foundation. If you have a weak foundation, mm-hmm. like I did in these other relationships. I had yeah. a very weak foundation. The foundation, just for clarity, is the the, the me. core values yes. and, and the, the... Just me. The, okay. Me me as a... Individual? As an individual. Okay. I, I didn't think I could and last And the reasons why people. you're in the relationship. Yeah. I was in the relationship because I didn't want to be alone anymore. And that's kind of like, again, I, I say this a lot. Anything that you must have to survive has power over you. So if the oxygen in this room, I use this analogy a lot, were to go away, Kevin and I would die. If you're treating your relationship like that, that's going to pressure the other person and suppress them inevitably. So you have to find a way to meet your needs 
outside of just that relationship. Otherwise, you're going to be starved of oxygen I every time they have to be a certain way. A good way for me to put this is now I know that I will be able to give. I know I have a lot to give in a relationship. Mm. I know I have a lot to give. And I know that what I have to give is valuable. It's not just time or like support. Like I know I have more than that. Like I can help give vision. Mm. I can help give relief. I can help, you know what I mean? I can help people think of other things. Like maybe the way you're Growth. thinking isn't the way you need to think. Mm. Instead of being short-sighted and having a, a small fixed mind of like, oh, don't leave me. Like don't go there. Don't go to this. Yeah. I just think I'm far more capable of giving from an unselfish place and also receiving from an, uns- an unselfish place. For all the listeners, this is the benefit of personal development. Because at one point, you didn't feel confident enough in your own value to not be needy yeah. and to not suppress the other person. Needy. And it's like it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing to look back and say, like, I was that dude. I was that dude who was afraid to let a girl travel across the country. And that's what she wanted to do. Like, that was her hope. And mm-hmm. I was afraid to let her do that. That was her dreams. That was her dreams. Amen. Yeah. Imagine if I did that now. I'd punch myself right in the throat. <laughs> <laughs> this is really good. So I have a quote up from Kevin's Instagram. And it says, sometimes your greatest strength is knowing your greatest weakness. Ah. So I have a question for you, Kevin, because we're this? trying hammer, to... Hammer Kevin Sunday? I think it's important for the listeners to realize that the reason you're growing so much is because you're constantly getting hammered with difficult questions. I'm in. Um, and that's what you did to your client. I deal that's with, what I do to my client. I deal with pain a lot. Um, so what is your greatest weakness? My greatest weakness is women, mm. for sure. And you think that that's because you... Why, why do you think that is? Uh, that is because of my past, the relationships I've had with women over the years, and my childhood. Mm. For sure. It's just, I've always felt like I, I needed. It wasn't necessarily because I, I wanted and felt like a relationship would serve me. It was always because I felt like I needed one to be whole. And now I feel whole without one. Ah, That's the biggest, that's the most important thing that has happened over the last year or so. One thing I will say, a couple things. One is the fact that you have dreams now yeah. and a vision for a brighter future that isn't predicated on someone else. Mm-hmm. Now you feel whole mm-hmm. and that and fulfilled, right? And mm-hmm. challenged and growth, all that. The other thing I want to say is power versus force. So I, I there's a great book about it, but I, it's it gets it gets kind of scientific and crazy, but for the for practical purposes for this episode, neediness is not powerful. Wanting something is power. Needing it is weakness. So anything that you must have, like water, oxygen, food, all that stuff, if you go without it, you're you're lesser. Power is being from a place of wholeness. And and if anyone wants extra Y power to get into personal development, to keep listening to this podcast, to go to the gym, to to have big dreams and chase them, listen to Kevin right now, what he used to be versus who he is now. You always had a big heart. You were always generous. You always wanted good things for others, but you weren't in a power position because you were needy, because you didn't work on yourself. You didn't fix some of the traumas of your past. We've all been through a lot of shit, and it's like these questions, like we are constantly doing this off air, and on air, and with other guests, and with mentors, and with coaches, and we're coaching other people. Like, there's a reason why Kevin and I seem so crystal clear on our goals and dreams. It's these conversations. Oh, yeah. We have these constantly. I know. Like, you're only getting, you're getting 20 minutes of it right now, but this has been happening for two weeks straight. Yeah, every day. Every day. Living with Kevin. Living with Kevin. Living with <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You've been living with Kevin Hashtag for tw- 20 with Kevin. Eight years. Um, so, years. if you're listening to this now, I'm sure you're thinking like, all right. So how can I use what just happened to Kevin? 100%. He got asked these questions where he dug deep. I have a list of questions that I like to ask people, and I say, like, you need to dig deep on the answers. So in any regard to your life, whether it's mental health, whether it's physical, whether it's a relationship, whether it's work, whether it's um, on the way to your dreams and your goals, ask yourself this. Where am I now? In this relationship, where am I right now? Am I the happiest I've ever been? Am I the most miserable I've ever been? Do I see a sustainable future? Am I looking for a way out? Am I settling? Am I only living here because we live together? Mm. Is it just because being with this person is easier than not being with them? Question one. Uh, Question two. Where have you been? So look back. Have I been in a worse mental state than this? Am Am I just freaking out? Am I overreacting because I'm stressed out? Have I been happier with this person 
Mm. Have we have we been happier than we are now? If so, okay, let me try to figure out why that is. Yeah, what maybe were we we're, doing? That right, yeah. right. Maybe was it the honeymoon stage? Maybe it's because we're both stressed at work. Mm. Just because you come up with answers doesn't mean you have to act on them right away. But this is all about bringing it to the surface. Yeah, it's it's bringing awareness to the surface. So you can analyze <clears throat> what's going on. Where do you want to be? This is a question that I don't think many people ask themselves. In your relationship, where do you want to be? Do you want to marry that person? Mm. Okay, cool. If you want to marry that person, then then start working towards that. Yeah. If you don't want to marry that person, and maybe marriage isn't for you, but if 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 the person wants to marry you and you don't want to marry them, you have some questions yeah. that you have to ask yourself. That need answering. Why are you still there then? Is it because it's comfortable? Because it's safe? Because it's easier? Why aren't you there? Why aren't you where you want to be? This is why you have to drop the ego all the way down. Oh, man. Yep. Why aren't you where you want to be? Mm -hmm. Is it because you've been lazy? Is it because you don't have a clear vision yet? Is it because you haven't started yet? Is it because somebody in your life's holding you back? Blah, blah, blah. There's there's so many answers to these. This is your training program in a nutshell. Pretty this much. is like the, the first module. Yeah, this is part of it. Yep. Can't give it all away. Yeah. <laughs> and this is the question that, this is a hard one for, this is a hard one for everybody. Especially, like, this was hard for us. What are you willing to do to accomplish what you want? Mm. Like, are you, if you're not happy, if you're, if, if you're with somebody and you know you shouldn't be with them mm. and you know deep down that they care about you and they're in love with you and they don't want to lose you and they would be happy with you forever, but you know you're not there, what do you do? Do you stay with them or do you say, look, I know this isn't serving me the way you feel it's serving you and that's not fair to you and you cut the cord? First, I would ask yourself why you're not there. 20 minutes already. Is it? So we're going to do another five. Guys, we're going to go five more minutes because we always go over and this episode thus far has been fire and I think that you guys can take a lot from this because these are the questions that we ask each other. These are the questions that we ask clients. These are the questions that we ask ourselves. I'm fired up. By the way, this is what therapy will do too. If you want counseling, that's what they do. They ask questions. Yeah. They allow you to express those yeah. questions and they dig deep into why things are the way they are so you have the power to change them. So... There was so much there that you just went through that I, I had so many like, oh my God, let's bring this to the listeners. One thing I want to say about what Kevin just mentioned about why are you in this relationship? First and foremost, you don't have to want to get married right now, but you have to want to eventually be with that person. So it's like if you're with, here's, here's, let me rephrase that. That was an incorrect statement. You don't have to. You don't have to be with this person forever, but you have to at least want to be if you want your maximum level of contribution. So let me clarify that. Human beings have what's called an investment bias. We will only ever pay a price today for a promise in the future. Therefore, if you're not taking consistent positive actions to be giving in your relationships, in your friendships, in your mentorships, in your career, it's probably because on some level you're not all in <clears throat> and you don't think this is someone in your life that will be in your life forever. So <clears throat> certainty and uncertainty. You need to be certain that you want to be with this person enough to take consistent action to be a good partner, right? But you have to be uncertain in terms of your approach, so that you consistently grow and evolve as they do because they're going to grow and change and you're going to need to continuously learn what makes them happy, what makes them feel supported, and vice versa. And by the way, whether it's an intimate relationship or a business partnership or a mentorship, a coaches, clients, you have check-ins where you ask questions. Like, Kevin and I have done that. Like, how are we doing, man? Like, is there anything that I could do better that bothers you? How many times have I asked you, like, is there anything that I'm doing that, that you think needs All the time. to improve? All the time. Yeah. And that's because we work together. And the only way to sustain any relationship over the long term is to have check-ins where it's like, I feel like you've been off lately. I'm off too. Like, well, let's figure this out. Let's talk it out. At one point, I was crying after Brendan Burchard's event if you remember that. I do. That and was sad to me. I was freaking out yeah. because I, I didn't feel certain about Anything. my level of contribution. Yeah. And I wanted to make sure that I was on point. So anyways, this is not easy. It's not no. easy. No, no, no. But None of this is easy. It's the only way to sustain anything I, long it's term. It's like, guys, I always say that living life isn't easy anyway. Yeah. <laughs> like getting up and going to a job you don't like isn't easy. Yeah. Getting, taking advantage of a relationship with somebody who doesn't respect you isn't easy. Mm. So why don't you take that struggle and take the effort and take the grind and put it towards something that's going to serve you in the future. That's what this is all about. Being proactive. That, yeah, being proactive. Hyperconsciousness is about that. It's about knowing like, shit, this is going to be hard right now. Mm. This is going to be hard. But eventually, 
I'm going to get where I want to be. It's probably it's going to be hard then too. Yeah. But at least you're going to be living a more fulfilling, joyous, happy life where you're getting the results you want. When you get the results you want, the work's far easier. Yeah, and it's you, far more fulfilling. You're going to grow too, and that's huge. Growing is great. Um, I had some questions. Do we want to add some behind the scenes stuff where we go through these and actually answer them and then put them potentially on the uh, hyperconscious nation for yeah. the behind the curtain? Um, yeah, we can do that. Okay. Yeah. Um, so hammer your questions quick and then do your reading. Okay, I'll hammer my questions very fast. We're coming up against it. Um, so you guys can use these questions. The questions Alan's going to ask are great questions where you can start using them now. Absolutely. Number one, what have I always loved to do? Very simple. Write them all down. And try to stretch too. Try to answer a bunch of stuff. Just a brain dump. Okay, number two. If a genie popped out when I rubbed a lamp and I could be world class at anything, what three things would I choose to be the best in the world at? Number three. If money wasn't a factor, what would I really want to be doing with my daily life on the day-to-day? Number four, if there was no possibility of rejection, who would I want to be with? I love that one. Uh, Thank you, Kevin. (laughs) (laughs) I was doing uh, social media. That's why I jumped in there a little late. (laughs) Number five, and this is one that I just came up with. Um, that kind of is an innovation off of one of Kevin's questions that he heard on Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec. So I do watch Netflix too occasionally. <laughs> Number five, if the world was ending tomorrow and tonight you could have a one hour heart to heart with anyone, who would they be and what would you talk about? Pick the top five people. These questions are going to stir the fucking pot. The snow globe's going to get shaken up. But when that stuff lands, and trust me, it's uncomfortable to not know stuff. Um, I always go back to after that car accident that I had when I was 25 and a half. What? We got three minutes. Okay. The camera's going to shut off. Um, and, and anyways, so when I got in that car accident, it caused me to question everything. That was a dark place. Because when you have no certainty and you don't think the roof is going to hang on, you're, you're scared. So it's scary, but trust me, when that stuff lands, you're going to be far more effective in your life getting to where you really want to be. Okay, dramatic reading, and then we got to go. <laughs> We're using different cameras, so they shut off at 30 minutes. We're at 26. Okay. Quickest, quickest thing. Okay, so this is the certainty bias, a.k.a. The doubt avoidance tendency. Remember, human beings don't want to have doubt. We feel like shit when we're doubting ourselves. Okay. What triggers the doubt avoidance tendency, a.k.a. certainty bias? An an unthreatened man or woman thinking of nothing in particular is not being prompted to remove doubt through rushing to some decision. So prompted. You need to proactively prompt yourself to live and breathe these questions so that you constantly check in to make sure you're on track. Um, Again, the natural state of most men is in some form of certainty, and this we have to take a step outside of ourselves and really question ourselves. This is why having a prep coach is so important. This is why having mentors is so important. Um, But also, you need to be your own coach as well. I think that this this is actually one of my favorite Scratching the Service episodes, I think, because it's proof positive that, like, we just did it. We did the exercise of, like, just dig deep. Keep digging deep. Maybe it's not all gonna. It's not gonna happen overnight. Yeah. Maybe it's not gonna happen in one session of you digging deep. But it's going to like remove the dirt from the next layer and the next layer and the next layer. You're gonna be able to dig deeper and deeper uh, throughout. Absolutely. So I wrote a little poem. I'll read it quickly. Uh, I wrote it right before this. So if it's dog shit, I apologize. <laughs> <clears throat> when these things become normal, we forget to take a second look and realize that we can turn the page and we can write a better book. Oh, so that's what that is right there. Oh, Alan, I and T-Mac are getting ready to drive down to Hollywood, Florida to see Eddie. And then we're going to see Catherine, Minnie, but mighty Nash as well. So the day has just begun for us, but we got, we guys, I (laughs) I love it. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Clearly we enjoyed recording it and we will talk to you guys later. Talk to you soon. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much for listening to another episode of the Hyperconscious Podcast. Going hyperconscious will absolutely change your life because if you understand why something is the way it is, now you have the power to change it. If you going hyperconscious with us has changed your life in any way, please share this episode with one of your friends because the more people that go hyperconscious, the better this world is going to be for everybody. And if you would kindly leave us a five star review on iTunes, that would help us make more people hyperconscious and we would be greatly appreciative. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>